Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast Extra. I'm Jason Harmon, your host. Doug Markins with me on this edition of the Extra, and we're going to be talking about turkeys. Uh, there's a big study going on down in the southern end of the state, south end of the state, and we're going to be talking about uh, turkeys. And you know, there's been some decline. People have been seeing some decline, and we're going. To, they've been doing a big study down there, and we got Richard Kirk in here to talk to us about it. So, what's going to be going That's on? That's right. And I want to remind you, Richard is going to be on one of our longer shows, yeah. uh, format shows, Tennessee Wildcast. Here in a week or so, in, in that show, we got started talking to him about turkeys and didn't get deep into it enough. But it's too important not to, so we decided to do a little extra with Richard. And Richard, thank you for staying around. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Uh, Richard Kirk is the manager, we call him the manager for, he's over the wildlife program in Middle Tennessee, which is we call Region 2 here at TWRA. And Richard, part of your work in the ra- last few years for sure has been looking at the turkey population down in southern Middle Tennessee. And you can tell us the counties that are down there. But there's been some de- some concern about decline in the number of birds down there, and ultimately the work that you're doing has led to more work that's going to be done that will help possibly across the state. So take us from the beginning. Okay. Uh, seven, eight years ago, uh, we started looking at turkey harvest, and Wayne Lawrence and Giles in particular, uh, harvest was down and, and, and had been going down several years uh, the local, the hunters in the area were concerned about disease being a possible uh, reason for that. Uh, so we partnered with the University of Tennessee to collect hunter harvested birds, asked hunters to bring their birds into man check stations where we had uh, our equipment set up and we took tissue samples and blood samples from all over that bird and sent to UT. And UT did a lot of testing on those birds. We sent about 200 uh, and, 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 you know, birds get uh, exposed to a lot of things. You and I get exposed to a lot of things. Uh, didn't really find much disease, but, but this is where it gets kind of interesting, that, and I didn't even know this was possible. But you think about what a turkey eats, whether it's eating acorns or grasshoppers or whatever, you know, in, in their, their stomach, and, and turkeys have a, uh, a part of their intestine called a cecum that is in particular is where they, they sample, but... There's a lot of DNA from things they eat in there. And there's a, there's a protozoa called blackhead. and The protozoa, that's the sickness? Yes, okay. yes. And the genetic makeup of blackhead has been identified, has been, um, I guess, ascertained, or, or they know it. All right? So, so they take this DNA out of that turkey and, and cross-reference it with known blackhead DNA, and they can can tell whether there's blackhead DNA in the stomach or gut of, of that turkey. And out of those 200, we had three birds that had DNA of blackhead in it. So that was interesting. Uh, the next little uh, st- study we did, we also partnered with UT, uh, the College of Veterinary Medicine. We took 24 birds. Uh, and, and were our experimental birds, and 12 birds are our control birds, and, and they were kept on just litter and feed. But the 24 experimental birds were raised, and, and, and I mean, they were 24 hours a day for, for I want to say, 24 days uh, on chicken litter. And so, so that's where they lived. That's where they ate. Every, every, I think every three days they changed that litter out. But uh, they had to eat, sleep walk around everything in in their little pen uh, in that chicken litter and then those birds were necropsied to see if if there was any kind of disease in those birds now one bird did develop blackhead and and showed all the external symptoms and and tissue was was identified as yeah that there it is but and there was one more bird that had um, blackhead dna in it as well so out of the 24 we had two birds when those birds were living on that litter, that contracted blackhead. So, you know, that was a snapshot. If, if this chicken litter had been taken to a field and spread on a field and turkeys had come in and, and fed on that litter, uh, you know, maybe what, what would have happened? All right. So, and let me stop you just right there for a second. The, and the reason there you're doing the litter is because there is concern. There is some chicken industry down in that area, and you're worried that some hunters think the litter might have something to do with it. Yes, yes. Okay. absolutely. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we we put this little study together in response to that. So, um, you know, two birds out of twenty-four, uh, really kind of inconclusive. 
there are things that drive populations and, and animal communities. Think about an animal community. You know, down there you're going to have uh, squirrels and rabbits and coyotes and bobcats and quail and other songbirds and mice. And, and, and you've got that community. And there are things that drive how that community is shaped. And those things are competition, predation, disease is one of them. And, and let's talk about competition. It could be competition for food. You know, if, if it's a bad acorn year, then there is competition for food between a, a lot of things. Uh, you know, for turkeys, there, there can also be competition in amongst a single animal group. You know, is it, is it competition for good nesting sites? Is it competition for good brood rearing sites? Um, you know, because if, if it's not good brood rearing habitat, then they're really susceptible to predation. You know, what, what's our nesting success in those areas? So, again, we partnered with the University of Tennessee with a uh, five-year data collection, six-year study uh, to look at what's going on in the turkey population down there. Uh, we're going to be radio tagging uh, hens and gobblers, and we're going to try to, and uh, I think we'll be able to, uh, put radios on poults as well. So what is the nesting success of hens? Uh, in some, some areas it may be as, you know, because this has been done some, some other places, some areas it may be as low as 10%. 30% nesting success may be really good. So, but we don't know in, in, in Tennessee. So we're looking at uh, nesting success, habitat use. Where are these birds using for nursery, not nursery, but brood rearing areas? Uh, what's that habitat look like? Is it good brood habitat? When you think about brood habitat, you need uh, grasses that um, kind of make tunnels. It needs to be open on the ground because these birds are small, short-legged uh, when they're little, and, and so they have to walk on basically bare ground, but yet it, the grass needs to cover them over, over top to protect them from predators. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of different stuff going on. We're going to do some hunter success um, surveys, okay. mail surveys. It's, it's a pretty elaborate study. Uh, it's going to be lasting five years of data collection. Sixth year, we'll get the final report. Okay, and we got to finish it up, but I want the sportsmen to know it's going to be, what, $1.16 million or something, something like, like that, yeah, but yeah. it's not coming out of their pockets. No, actually, uh, it's, it's federal aid money. It's, it's money that we get from the Fish and Wildlife Service, our portion of it. UT is putting money into it, so um, it, it, like, a, like I said, $1.16 million. Okay. All right. And, and, um, make sure to watch Richard. I'll let, I'll let, uh, Jason plug the show again before we get out here. Cause he's just the longer format show really gets in some good stuff about WMAs, but Richard, it's something that's going to help the study on turkeys is going to help not just manage birds in middle Tennessee, but information will be used to help all across Tennessee, all across the state and maybe beyond. Absolutely. It, you know, we, we manage historically, we've managed animal populations based on harvest numbers. With this, we should be able to, to understand things like, uh, more, you know, what what part of mortality is harvest? There's a there's mm -hmm. a total mortality out there of which harvest is part of it. But what's the what's that other segment of that mortality? The natural mortality. Uh, what's the mortality of hens? The nest success. Um, so so all this put together will, will help us once we understand this. Help us set seasons. Uh, with, with more data. Okay, we'll get you back on here when, when uh, as it goes on. And we sure. can talk about what's going on and keep everybody updated with the turkey, what, what's going on with that turkey study. And it's going to be interesting to see as it started. Uh, it starts this fall. Well, this winter we'll start trapping birds after deer season this winter. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks for joining us for this edition of Tennessee's Wildcast. Uh, watch the full version, or Wildcast Dexter, watch the full version with uh, Richard and uh, learn a lot there. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.